My name is Brendan. I am a software engineer at uh, Airbnb. I work on the data infrastructure team. I'm here to talk to you today about, um, first of all, how I got involved with the Mesos project, what we're doing with Mesos today at Airbnb, uh, as well as what we'd like to do perhaps in the future and what we are doing. So uh, start off, a little, little story time about Airbnb. We have six core values, host, champion the mission, every frame matters, be a serial entrepreneur, simplify, and embrace the adventure. Now, Mesos, I think, uh, really embodies one of these uh, core values, simplify. Mesos is about taking a very difficult problem, as many of you probably know, which is distributed computing, uh, and doing this like in a reliable, consistent manner, handling you know state of a cluster. Uh, it's really about having like a simple set of APIs being a kernel for your infrastructure, your data center. Uh, also, I would say it's kind of about this core value because you know it's a lot of fun to do this stuff, especially at this point. It's it's pretty early, I would say. So how did I get started with Mesos? Um, I joined Airbnb about a year and a half ago. And when I joined Airbnb, um, I had never heard of Mesos, as a matter of fact. I had no idea what it is. Um, and when I joined, uh, Florian Liber, who uh, went off to start his own startup, Mesosphere, he uh, introduced me, there he is back there, he introduced me to, uh, Mesos, and he said, hey, Brendan, I know what you should work on. You should get Hadoop running on Mesos. And up to this point, I think, I think there were like maybe two frameworks um, public uh, for Mesos. One of them was uh, Kronos, which was a project at Airbnb, and the other was Hadoop. There, there may have been others. However, this, the state of the Hadoop framework was such that it wasn't really um, usable in production. So anyway, I spent the next few months diving into the code, trying to run this thing, uh, and finding out that there were a lot of, uh, there were a lot of gotchas in there. So um, I went in, I submitted a bunch of patches, I got it running, and fast forward today. So what are we doing today? Today at Airbnb, we run um, a number of frameworks in production. Uh, our infrastructure looks like this. We have a bunch of little boxes inside a bigger box, where the bigger box is EC2, and the little boxes are mostly, mostly slaves. And along, on those slaves, when I say slave, I kind of mean both Mesos slave and the, the instance it's running on. Um, alongside the Mesos slave, we're running HDFS data nodes. Uh, the master is made up of like the Mesos master alongside the um, HDFS name nodes. Uh, in terms of frameworks, we, we have Kronos, Marathon, Hadoop, and Storm, which we all run in the same Mesos cluster. Zooming in a bit, um, if you like SSH into one of these machines and you did a PS, you would see maybe some Hadoop tasks, uh, maybe some Kronos stuff, some Storm worker, and uh, possibly something on Marathon, all cohabiting. Uh, so what do we use Kronos for? Kronos, if you're not familiar, is kind of like a distributed uh, cron, I guess. Um, and uh, it allows you to build, um, or allows you to like build these uh, dependency-based scheduled job things, right? So you have a job, it kicks off at a certain time, and if it has uh, children which depend on it, then when it finishes, it kicks off the children. So you can construct these very elaborate, like ETL, um, hive, cascading, whatever things. Um, and then the other really important part of our, our uh, data infrastructure is um, Marathon. And interestingly, we actually run Kronos on Marathon. Uh, this, this is nice because we don't really have to worry about the machines that it, these are running on, where they're running, 
or anything like that. Marathon just keeps stuff up. Um, we also like run the job tracker. We run extra Mesos masters on Marathon in case the master masters go away for some reason. Um, and in our experience with AWS, we find that like instances tend to go away pretty frequently. Um, like Toby mentioned, sometimes it'll get an email and it's like, oh, by the way, that instance is scheduled for retirement in a week. And then you're like, oh, and you go check the instance and actually it's not working right now. So that happens. What kind of things are we looking to do in the future? So um, we've been running Mesos in production for like a year and a half, two years maybe, depending on how you look at it. And we've learned a number of interesting things. Uh, one is that this relates to Hadoop more than any other thing. You need to have um, better isolation of resources. So right now we've, we've had one cluster for the most part that everyone in the company shares. And Airbnb isn't quite at the scale of like Twitter or Google, but we're growing. And what we need now is we need two clusters and we need to share data. So uh, what we're working on right now is building um, a set of two new clusters which uh, have a shared HDFS and use HDFS federation to share the data. Um, and in addition to having like separate isolated resources and like guaranteed resources for a given service, uh, when I say service I mean like framework, uh, at the same time we can now actually roll out configuration changes and change software. In our current picture it's really hard to do that because it's risky. If something breaks, then our one cluster that we have is now hosed and we have to fix that. And you know, that's bad. Especially with you know, things like HDFS. Uh, if your HDFS name nodes stop for some reason, everything stops. So what does that look like? Uh, this, is, this is a pretty intense process uh, for us. You know, we have to boot up all the new instances figure out what we're going to run. We have to upgrade all, all these things. And when you upgrade all these different services, you end up with, um, you, you kind of go through a process of discovery. And what you're discovering is that things don't work the way they're supposed to. You discover new regressions and all sorts of things. And, and when you're talking about like schedulers and frameworks, uh, then those can be bad. Uh, especially if it's like, oh, I'm going to just launch a thousand tasks for no reason and totally thrash all your machines. So that happens. Uh, yeah, so then we have to migrate all the data and services. And from a, from a customer point of view, and our customers are like the analytics team, engineering, as well as the rest of the company, it's, it's a bad experience when like, oh, I had this thing here and now it needs to go over there. And this thing is different. And like, people, people don't really care that much about where things are running or what cool scheduler features and stuff there are. What they want is they want to have their data. They want to have their answers. They want the data to be correct and reliable. Uh, so trying to migrate all this stuff in one go is pretty tricky. So what kind of stuff are we doing differently to make it a bit easier? Uh, one thing we're doing. So this, this is like my own made up term that doesn't really mean anything, but in my head it means something. Uh, and what I mean by this is, so in the old picture, um, we, would have, uh, we would have instances that have a portion of their resources um, reserved for certain things. So like Marathon, for example, would have a certain portion of instances re or resources reserved. The trouble with this is that um, what if we need to launch a task on a slave that's bigger than the reserved instance or reserved resources, for example? Uh, not just that, but like it becomes kind of tricky to figure out, uh, like you know, do we have enough resources? And then, and then you start to get into like stuff like preemption and over subscription, which has been talked about. And uh, given the size of our team right now, that's a little too crazy for us. So instead, what we're doing is we're taking Hadoop and we're going to say, all right, Hadoop, you guys run there. 
this guy. Uh, he's kind of a crazy little guy, likes to run wild and uh, should like put horns on it, something. I don't know. Anyway, so reserve, I, I should clarify, when I, when I say this, I mean Hadoop is running on the, uh, like the catch-all, the, the asterisk in, in Mesos terms role, right? So you could actually run other stuff on this too if your scheduler decides to acquire the um, free-for-all resources, right? And then we have another set of slaves which are just, just reserved for Kronos tasks, right? So it's like we have this many Kronos tasks and they have this certain SLA and we need them to run, so just have enough instances so that we can always run that many, that many jobs, right? And then we have another set for marathon tasks. That, that essentially covers everything for us, right? Um, Storm and Hadoop, they can kind of fight over it. And Marathon and Kronos, they get what's left over. Um, or not what's left over, they have their own. What else? Uh, Amazon came out with a new generation of instances. It's, it's pretty hard to like swap all your instances out when you're running stateful services like HDFS, for example. Um, this is pretty cool. You'll see on the uh, left column, there's a new type, or the old type. They had two Cs and a two, and then an 8x large, so I guess they dropped one of the Cs because it was redundant. They changed the two to a three. It's gotta be better. They added a dash and another number to the CPU name. Uh, they lost half a G of memory, but you know, gotta get lean. Uh, the, disks, the disks are much better. Now, I, I can't speak for how reliable they are. Um, we personally, like, I've personally seen a lot of failures of disks, um, but I think that's not unique to Amazon. That's just the nature of having moving parts. Uh, what else? Uh, I thought I would throw these up on a slide. Uh, just mention them because everybody's talking about it. They seem pretty cool. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, do something with those. Uh, <laughs> all right. So <laughs> this, is, this is the part that, that I, I think I'm pretty well qualified to talk about what really needs work in like the Mesos ecosystem right now. Uh, and this, this is a matter of opinions mostly, but I think there's like three, maybe four things. Uh, the first thing is like logging, monitoring, metrics, that kind of stuff. Like how do you know what is running where and how do you search for stuff? Um, most like users of Mesos, at least in you know, the terms of, of Airbnb, don't really want to go to the Mesos UI and find their task and figure out all this stuff. So, they should be able to just type a name or a word or something into a search thing and just pop up the logs. That should just happen. Uh, monitoring, like, why, why do nerds love to like make new monitoring things? And like, there should just be a canonical one and just take like all the tasks. You've only really got two types of services. It's either, you know, it's something running on the JVM and you gotta worry about garbage collection or it's not. Uh, so, you know, put that stuff in one place. Debugging, it's kind of the same sort of stuff, but a little different. Like, if you're trying to develop a service and you need to, you know, you're writing something in Java and you need to attach a uh, JVM, a debugger or something, why, why, can't, why can't that be easier? Uh, that would be cool. Maybe a bit of a pipe dream. Uh, deployment, documentation. Uh, I think I'm to blame for this somewhat because some of this knowledge is up in my head, but for the other people out there who also have this stuff up in their, their head, we need to like write it down, get it out there. Because um, if you're starting from nothing, it's, it's pretty hard to figure out uh, what to do. So yeah, I think that's it. Oh yeah, number four, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, there were, when I, this is like a, a template slide and there was a fourth one, I didn't know what to put there. So there we go. Uh, that's all I got.